In this video, let's take a look at how we can create masonry layouts in React and weld in Next.js when the content is pre-rendered in the server. Now, if you're wondering what masonry layouts are, well, they are grids, but each item can take up the height it needs without affecting the overall layout. So for example, these two have the same height, so this is pretty much as if you were using a traditional grid with CSS. Meanwhile, this one has way more height, so what it does is push down this element, which gives this interesting and varied look. Now, I did look up online for a library that could do this out of the box, but I couldn't really find one. They either didn't work with Next.js or the API was so complicated. And for my project, which is just showing this grid, I didn't need all of that customization that these huge libraries bring. So I did find this great library called React Pluck. Now, this one is a tiny library, which I believe is just one kilobyte. And all you need to do is install it, import masonry, and then you can say items is equal to, you pass in an iterable, so an array, then you can pass in the config, and then you have columns, gap, and media. And this corresponds to the different media. So for 640, one column and 24 gap, and so on and so forth. So which position in the array corresponds to that in the media array. And then we have the render function. So it gives you each item here that you pass in, and then you can do whatever you want here. Unfortunately, this library doesn't support Next.js. Now, if you come here over to the issues, there is one where it says flickering issue on initial render. And the problem is because in the library, in the source code, the number of columns it is going to show at first is one. So when we use Next.js, while it hydrates in the client and calculates the new columns, it is going to show one whole column. So we get that flicker. Now, this is quite funny because I had not seen this issue in some time. And just three hours ago, the maintainer posted a solution or so it seems. So it says I prevent rendering to avoid the flickering. Now, this is a valid solution. So instead of rendering the grid right away, it waits until it has hydrated in the client and then it is going to show the masonry grid. But I went with another approach and that is showing a loading skeleton. So if I refresh, I have this loading skeleton denoting that well the content is loading, which in other terms means that it is hydrating in the client. That way we avoid this flicker and the user can see right away where the content will be positioned. Now, this could be a better solution than this one from preventing rendering altogether, but both can work just fine. So what I did actually was copy over the source code and I brought it over here to my project, which you can find the source code in the description. But obviously, all credit goes to this person who developed the entire library. So you can use either you can use my version or well, you can use the official version that depends on your use case and what you want for your application. As for my case, I'll stick with my solution because I prefer showing a loading skeleton rather than not showing anything at all. So again, all I did was come here to this project and here in libraries, we have the source code, which is this one. So I just copied it all over here, pasted the code, and then just added some modifications by modifying the masonry props. I defined a placeholder, which is optional. And then here in the actual masonry component function, I just have a is layout ready, which is equal to columns different from zero. So this way, since it is at first initialized with zero columns, that means that if this value hasn't been modified yet, then it has not been hydrated. And so I can just return the placeholder. So render the placeholder if the layout is not ready. And that's pretty much it. Nothing more. So here I have in content cards, I have a React server components. I render the layout, so the masonry layout, and I just pass in the contents. So contains ID, title, description, etc. And then I pass in the configuration, and then I pass in the placeholder. And that's all I had to do. And this placeholder can be anything. 
It could be a loading spinner, a skeleton, whatever you want. In my case, I prefer a skeleton so the user can get an idea of what the content will be when actually loaded. So I just render a content card skeleton, which is just a skeleton in this format using this component, which is just animate pulse, rounded MD, and then BG muted. And in fact, if I come here and change this to be true, just to force the placeholder, we get all of these skeletons rendered. And then, well, once the layout is ready, then we get the content itself. And so we get this great user experience as opposed to, well, not rendering anything whatsoever, as I suppose is what the library now does out of the box. So remember, you can find the code in the description, but make sure to check out the official library as well. So this now wraps up the video. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to like the video and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.